Welcome everyone, I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. I hope you've all had a good week. I was just hoping that I weren't going to start this whole thing by me sneezing, my nose is tickling. <laughs> right, um, have we got anyone in already? Oh, Fairy Hi Fairy Hedgehog, I hope you've had a good week. Um, I'll start out by doing my item of the week which is something that's available to buy in my shop because I'm going to make a woolly mammoth today I thought I would show off one of my dinosaur boxes this is a I can't remember the name of the long neck one now long neck dinosaur that would do it and on a star shaped box now I had to put a bit of blue tack there to hold it on its side so you could see it properly but that's what the inside looks like and the base and it's 25 pounds and I really do love the fire swirl colors to it only one available like there is with most of my boxes in my shop so if you like this the shop address is up in the top corner right I'll put this out the way now I'm going to be making a um, woolly mammoth like I said it's for arty hearty life son Jake he is a really lovely boy and I thought I'd make him a gift um, since they're not on right now I think I'll just take a little bit of extra time just to tell you how my guinea pigs are settling in um, I managed to get a photo of them there you go the cream one is chip the grey one is Dow. They have been with me for today's their fifth day. They were rehomed from another household that couldn't keep them anymore. Really, really lovely boys. I'm really enjoying being their mum already. And already fallen completely in love. They're the most fluffiest guinea pigs I've ever had. I have had what if I had two boys and then two girls in the past so this will be my second my second lot of boys third round of pigs but I said I'd get you a picture and I did right so I got that covered now what I did is what I do with all my models go on to Google have a look around for different shots of the thing you're trying to make so that's what I've done here um, there are a bit, there's a bit of a difference to a woolly mammoth and an elephant they've got a lump on the top of their head and they've got more of a lump on their back and you can see there's an elephant in compared to a mammoth so I've got to make sure I do that and obviously the tusks are a lot longer and a lot more curved round and the hair's long so I will get on to all of that now the first thing I want to make is the base that it's going to stand on because that's going to be in lots of pale colours because I'm going for a kind of ice look so before I get on to the mammoth I'm going to get on with the base so I put the picture out of the way for now. Oops, there we go. I've also got to one side a couple of little plastic elephant models just so that I've got another thing, another way of referencing. Like I said, I tend to um, collect little plastic models so that I've got a reference guide for when I am making those animals um, okay right the base so we're looking for swirly ice colors so what I've done is I've made lots of strips of different shades of blue silver and I've mixed for that one that's the silver with some blue mixed into it a bit of um, green and double white because we're looking for more snow so what I'm gonna do first off 
is put them into pairs of colours that don't look too similar to each other. So you don't want to put, say, those two together because they look a bit too close. Hotty Hotty Life says, hi, we're here, but connection is spotty. Hey guys, I'm starting on the base. Um, I will have a video of it, but it's great that you can join us. Right, okay. What I'm doing now is I'm pairing off the colours. I tend to go dark and light. So that'll do, that'll do. Now, you if you end, I'll do two of them as twos and two of them as threes so I can show you how I do this. You can work with either. If you're working with three, stack them up so they make a little triangle shape like that once you've got your colors together you're going to twist them hold one end to the board and just run your fingers along to start creating a twist the other way you're doing that and by the time you get anywhere through it those muscles are going to hurt so just hold and roll now i've already conditioned this clay so that it's soft But you want to get a decent twist along it make sure you get the ends twisted in as well because they will they will stay just alongside of each other and not twist it doesn't have to be that even on to your next one so put that out of the way again hold one side still roll around and you're twisting it all up does so I wanted that to happen see it broke there that's not it ruined just push it back together or you can hold under the brake and twist up to the brake then hold the other side of the brake and twist up like that and then just push the brake back together and you still got twisted clay then it's absolutely fine so now that's a stack of three that I'm doing. So again, hold one side still. Oops, I didn't twist the ends of that. I'm going to fold that over because it's slightly longer than the other. There we go. Right, hold one side, twist along. The, weirdly enough, the stacks of three do tend to twist up easier. And if you're trying to make something that's just coloured stripes in your clay, you might want to consider doing this. You do the twist and then you just roll it out and you end up with a sheet of stripy clay. It's easier than trying to get sticks all to line up to each other. Right. So, they're all twisted together once. Now, I'm then going to stack them up on top of each other so they are stable if there's a bit that's long just curve it over like that so it's a stable block that I can roll together I've done this where they're that thick round I made a massive block of swirly clay but so long as you've not got massive gaps they're fine hold one end and you're going to roll we're missing bits because of the buffering so if you speak to us and we don't respond that's why we might see chat done that's okay thank you uh we'll need you as soon as i've made up this swirly pattern because there's some decisions to be made we're not dropping any frames though so i don't think it's on our end yeah she did say that her internet was down so i folded it in half and then twisted it on itself and now fold it up again so it makes a roughly round ball now let's get it roughly stuck together if you want like a camo print like camouflage print you can use this at this stage let me get a blade out and I'll show you what it looks like inside do you see what I mean it's like a camouflage but we're going to bring that down to a tighter swell because I think it looks okay, more Chuck pretty says, I miss the beginning? No. so once you've got it into a ball 
that's all right i haven't done much you've seen me make swells up before i'm going to roll this back out into a long sausage again <laughs> You did miss the photos of me guinea pigs so they were back at the beginning. Right, you don't want to roll it out too thin because it is harder to work with and you can start blending the colours too much. So I've gone down to about the size of a five pence piece. If you're using a lot more colours you will probably want it thicker than that. Hold Very one end. I shall have to come up and see them in person. They are so cute. They are. And can you see I'm just twisting the colours on themselves like I did before. Hearty hearty life says, hello, this is Jake. Hi Jake. Nice to see you. Have you had a good day today? Fold on itself. Twist. Twist, twist, on in half, twist again and we're going to form up into a ball like we did before. So this is my finished clay but it's not got the right outside. Ready. Right, I'm forming it back up into a ball. Now you can use it like this, that is pretty as just lots of swells. But what I like to do is I form it into a cube. Then you cut the outsides off so you don't have to be too accurate. That's what the inside is looking like now. That's what we're going to use. So cutting the outside of it all off so that it all looks the same now we're not wasting these slices because what I've found is if you turn them back in on themselves I've never come across that design you've got to be really really unlucky to cut through back into exactly the same place I think it's practically impossible Fairy Hedgehog says so pretty what are you making I'm making a woolly mammoth for Jake. So we're starting with the base, what we're going to actually stand the mammoth on. So I'm going for icy colours. So as you see, I'm putting them all back on, and you'll find that from then on, wherever you cut through that block of clay, it's going to have that sort of swirly design. So, Fairy Hedgehog says, Lucky Jake. see, any way you want for it, it's all the same. So yeah, don't waste those slices, just turn them back so that the outside's facing inwards. Right, blade away, roll this into a ball, and then we'll make it into a flat plinth. Now, this is the bit that Jake's got some decisions on. I have lots of crystals and beads that I can embed into the blue to make it look a bit more interesting around the mammoth so whilst I'm getting rid of all these join lines just by rolling it out are there any particular ones of these that you like so we've got number one up the top these are cat size. They can you see the gleam through them? I've got those in white and in blue. Next to them are little cubes. Very uh, Hearty Hearty Life says nice ice. I think they might mean nice nice. <laughs> little cubes of crystal that reflect rainbows when you angle them in. Then I've got some big sort of faceted round ones then the next little lot are all polished stones of different sizes and in the middle are glass pebbles Mary Hedgehog asks what would the crystals be used for right I'm going to make the base and then I'm going to put a few in around the edges 
and then put the mammoth in the middle so it looks like kind of icy colors sticking up but in glasses and crystals and polished stones was my plan yeah right bit of greaseproof paper down get me rolling pin you can do it straight onto your glass board but you will have to free it up with your knife once you've got it where you want it so i do a couple of rolls spin what are we a couple of degrees so slight turn and you'll find you get a perfect circle if you keep doing that Sarah Hedgehog said that sounds great I wondered why the mammoth was going to be blue and then Artie Artie Life says middle <laughs> yeah no we are not doing a blue mammoth they I actually looked into this mammoths seem to be one of the ones that they've actually found the most complete of because they lived in very very frozen areas they've actually found mammoths encased in ice which has preserved fur and their all the flesh and all that so they're not bone fossils like other dinosaurs Artie, Artie Lou says cool pun intended <laughs> right that's your base yeah and the bottom of it looks like that now we've got to decide which side we want to be the top Side one, side two. What do you reckon? Side one the top or side two the top? Fairy Hedgehog says smiley face. That way? Yes. Might be buffering. I might have to make this decision. I'm going to go for the tighter swells. Right. So. It might be easier to make the mammoth than put in the crystals around the outside at the end. So let's do that. It gives you an idea, that's my plan anyway. I'm going to start with the tin foil centre, which is what I do for any areas that are very thick with clay. This prevents you having any clay that doesn't actually react with the heat and Says, Set. Side one, what do you think, Jake? And then Hearty Hearty Life says middle, which I'm not sure how helpful that is. Smooth. This side. Or this side. That side. Yeah? Turn it over. That one. Ye? Cool. Right. I'm forming a little ball because you've got quite a round stomach for it. Once you've got some tin foil down to the size you want, use your board to smooth out any sharp bits because they will stick through your clay if you don't. Now, make sure you've got your pictures so you can see it, obviously. Whilst I'm smoothing this out, I read the most interesting article. Uh, mm -hmm. it over the other way again. Oh, this side. Bigger swells. Yes. Yes. Bigger. Okay, that side up. Perfect. Right. I read an article where they've done a study that has shown that grief can actually change the shape of your heart. They've got scans of it. BBC has an article on it. So when people say that they're feeling, they feel it in their chest when they're grieving, they actually can do. It's a thing, which fascinated me. Right, we've got a smooth ball now, and that will give you the idea of the size the mammoth's going to be. So we now need to cover it in clay. Because I'm going to put hair over the top of it, it can be done with just the main middle bit can be done with scrap clay so always keep a little bit of that knocking around for areas that aren't going to be seen what I am going to use over the top of it I've made up 
some brown different coloured brown fades that I'm going to make hair from says, sorry this buffering is making my response to it that's all right so lots of different shades of brown and what I'm going to do once I've covered that ball in some base clay is show you how I made this kind of stick but because I've showed you so many times how to do a basic Skinner blend I'm going to mix it up a bit and do a triple Skinner blend so if you want to do a normal one you just literally forget that half and just do a rectangle with a diagonal for it so you wouldn't believe I condition this clay down right I want to make sure though that there is a decent base to be able to attach the hair to so that's a good starting point of this so I'm just going to cover the ball in some clay it doesn't have to be that neat well this is very rare for this to happen I usually am able to condition the clay the day before I use it and it stays fine for some reason I must have one of the harder clays in this mix because it is more crumbly but we can still use it perfectly well so I'm just covering it up there we go right I'm hoping that next week I will be able to get my piggies actually out of their cage and bring them on camera at the beginning of my live stream to be able to show you they did you get the message thank you uh, thank you so much Carly it's all right you. you guys are lovely right so that's roughly covered so I'm going to quickly roll it so that it's a bit more even but the join lines won't matter so much because you won't see them but you want to make sure that the clay actually is firmly stuck together so it doesn't fall apart once you baked it so it's worth getting most of the join lines out even though we're covering it there we go now get you back to a ball shape because you've gone a bit egg shaped there there we go right so now I'm going to put this to one side like that I'm going to just quickly show you how I do a Skinner blend move that so I don't squash it with my pasta machine you can do this with a rolling pin it's just so much quicker with a pasta machine now you are going top to bottom along the, the triangles that way not that way you're trying to get the blend so that each bit has a different amount of white and brown so that you get a fade along that direction if that makes sense right so first turn through i never do the pull up on the pasta machine i take it out and reflip it back through because it's easier on your arms make sure it's not too bent underneath there you go I will do it on that last bit because I can't be bothered to take it out right so we now got a long V now let's see if I can do this on camera there we go you're going to fold it over on itself making sure that you have some of each color 
on the ends that isn't covered by cream even if you need to fold it up a bit like that you can put it through with just one fold at a time I tend to do two just because it means that you're doing less passes through the machine you just got to make sure you don't trap too many air bubbles so you're going to sit there poking air bubbles out but since we're going to be using it for individual hairs it doesn't really matter because we're going to chop this block up a lot right well it's folded for me <laughs> here we go bring it back out fold in half and again now I'm going to tell you this this is my first time making Oli Mammoth and I've made a Highland cow so I'm good at the long hair thing and I made an elephant but this will be my first mammoth I'm quietly hopeful I think it'll be fine right it doesn't look like much at the moment but it will get there a couple of passes through some people are really hardcore and they pass theirs through like 30 times I don't think I'm gonna need to do that mainly because I'm gonna shrink it down so if I was using it as a background for something and the blend was very very obvious then I would probably pass it through, through a few more times I'm just making sure it doesn't spread too far out sideways so I'm just using my fingers to push it back in whilst it's folded up because it's easier when it's thicker to mould into new shapes getting there almost there with that and I've seen people do tiny triangles of the whole rainbow you might need a bit of a wider pasta machine but they are out there or you can use a rolling pin Back on, going through there we go I reckon two more passes and this will be perfect and I can show it off properly but it's one of the most used things a skinner blend and once you start getting into it you find it that you've got a million uses for it it is just um, such a pretty thing to be able to blend from one colour to another and you can do it by just literally adding two colours next to each other and just smudging them along but this gives you a better gradient right I reckon we're there so let's get this big old machine out of the way put it back up on my shelf there we go right isn't that pretty now how you make it into the block you fold it up on itself like you did before and you're going to start to push hold in the middle and push with one side and then push with the other then turn it over do the same again because what we want to do is bring that in and bring it so that it's more of a higher block shape it's going pretty well there I'm going to come along and I'm going to pinch if it starts to fold up on itself a bit do just push it down but from the middle along I'm just squeezing and forming it into the log shape that I want okie dokie fingers crossed 
right there we are we're into that log sh shape that I want and you'll find because you've taken it from the middle and pulled out it's got the same fade all the way along there you go Hedgehog asks, do we need to move? How? Uh, no, we're streaming to YouTube as well, so... Yeah, we're streaming to YouTube or Twitch. It streams at the same time to both. Right, so let's put some legs on this dude. I'm going to use a FIMO Soft in brown because the legs and the head are more likely to be seen. Just make sure you don't get your brown onto your blue base. Right. Now, soften that up. I'm having a very weak hand day today, so I'm having to, it looks like I'm struggling with conditioning when I've actually already pretty much conditioned most of it. Right, since I'm at this, let's do a bit more brown off. I would do that, wouldn't I? But it got the brown off. There we go. Now, sometimes when you're using light colours, you feel like you need to wear a hazmat suit. It really is troublesome. Right, here we go, that's soft now. I'm going to divide it so that I've got four legs the same size. It's easier to make sure you do a divide at this stage than it is to do it later on and then try and size the balls up once you made them into legs. Where are we? Oops. There we go. Can you see they're roughly the same size as each other? Now, right, so for your legs, you want to form into balls. The front ones seem to be pretty much thick logs whereas the back ones have a bit more of a hip. So what I'm going to do is the first two, I'll do the front legs first and then I'll do the back legs. So I'm rolling them out just into thick logs. Maybe a bit longer, there we go. That sort of size. Then flatten them down make sure they're roughly the same height you have no idea how long it took me to learn to double roll like that if you watch me doing it and go I can't do that I couldn't do that it was ages of practicing but it really does save time right can you see I'm pushing it on and I'm just moving it up the sides to make sure that it's fully attached then you do the same with the next one. A little bit of a gap, pushing it on. Make sure that it's fully attached because we're going to cover it in some hair anyway. So we won't need to really smooth out the joins on it. Right, two back legs. Mm, 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 mm. I'm pushing them back a bit because I think they're too far in the middle there we go right sorry on the camera pushing them back a bit make sure they're where you want them you got your two back legs on now front legs on now for the back legs and they're pretty much the same thing into a ball 
out into thick logs make sure they're roughly the same height but you are going to do some squidging on it anyway so it doesn't matter greatly if they're perfectly the same height now make sure you've got them lined up where you want them so I'm going to put them in and then join them so like that so we've got four legs on you push the ones you just added on securely and bring the legs more up you can put them more to the sides if you wish on some animals especially animals like deers they tend to have very big fire muscles because they're jumping around whereas elephants need to have very stocky legs because of the weight they're taking so they tend to go more underneath right there we go that's a starter here we are right I want to put some florist wire in to secure the neck and head because it's gonna be kind of weaker it it just helps support the load so I use a thicker florist wire I'm not sure what gauge it is I've got a mixed pack um, but the thicker ones are the smaller numbers you're going to decide. I can't find the stream on YouTube not showing up on your channel feed. What? That is disconcerting. That is very disconcerting. Um, the channel is on hold. Really? We just looked at it and it's now saying the channel is on hold and that makes no sense because it's been fine. When YouTube works, it works really well. And when it doesn't, it's really annoying. Right. So a bit of that's going to be neck. And a bit of that's going to be to go into the head. But I have got my, my hubbies on it. Right. Uh, Artie Hearty Life says, if you ask Jake something and don't get a response, just go with what you think is better okay that's fine right now actually I think I'll do no I'm gonna do the neck in this grey and then I'm gonna do the head in brown because we're quite likely to see some of the head we won't get it fully hair covered so I'm gonna put that on that may be a bit too much actually let's take some off This is the thing I like about sculpting is that you it's not so formal you can take bits off and put bits on and just see what you think and all the years I've been at this what it has given me is an eye to be able to see what needs changing and it's hard to explain as a teacher the statement of just fiddle with it until it looks right and um, sometimes I wish I could be more descriptive than that but really that's what your main problem solving technique is is keep fiddling with it till you've got what you want and once you've decided it's at the best you can do you need to know when to stop so I've got a bit of a body and a bit of a neck going on there I'm gonna just square up the back and put a bit of a spine in it now it's easier to pinch a big ridge and then flatten it out says, that is adorable looking cute love it uh, that was Jake yay I'm glad 
we haven't even got the hair on yet we're just getting the basic basic body shape and I'm always doing this you, I end up pushing too hard on the legs and flattening them out but you can just come back and do what I'm doing now and squidge them back long how you want them which is why it's best to work on it not on your base until you're at the finishing stages so when I start adding hair I will add that to the base at that stage there we go we've got a bit of a spine going on there because it the thing is you can get away with a lot as an artist weird hairstyles slightly out of proportion body bits but there are certain things that the human mind is going to go hang on that's missing and a spine on a mammal is one of them so it's always worth just putting in that back ridge now there is a lump at the top of the shoulders you're doing better than I am I was terrible at haikus and I didn't really continue on with them so we've got it's that sort of shape of a bump at the back on the shoulders so I'm going to push that on there and squidge it down a bit so that when I add the hair there will be that neck bump and what they found that was all about was um, I think that was a fat deposit that helped when they couldn't find food for long periods of time I, that's the last I heard of it but it's a definite thing in the adults and the babies don't seem to have it that much so if you're going to do your mammoth you might as well do it accurate to the last bit of information the thing is we're at a golden age of paleontology at the moment the reasoning behind that is because we've got some amazing new equipment being developed and it's just telling us a lot more that we didn't know and obviously over time we're finding more and more fossils and some of them are really awesome like we're finding feather marks and fur and body shapes that we didn't think were right and we've had to readdress some of our old decisions if you look at the old Jurassic Park they there wasn't a feather in sight I think the new one does have more feathery animals it was a while ago that I watched it but yeah they are pretty sure that a lot of dinosaurs were very brightly coloured and were very feathery so we've got a head shape before we add it we're going to bring down for a trunk so we pinch at the tip and just starting to pull what I'm pinching I think we'd have to restart the stream just quickly in order to get YouTube working okay um, we're gonna apparently we need to restart the stream in order to get YouTube working so we're literally doing the techie thing of turning it off and on again I won't do anything until he comes back Ready, so I see you in literally a few minutes no, not, even that not even that a few seconds so that sorry about, about this Ready, see you in a we back no, no? Connecting. connecting tell me when we're back. right we're back was that quick enough did it work we'll find out so yes pick which side you want to be the top of the head and just start to bend that trunk down now it's got quite a long trunk so it's worth keep going and it best animals elephants are, actually, are good actually they are great third best animal woolly mammoths are very very fluffy I like them a lot but naked mole rat is far greater than the rest it is the best says Arty Arty Life 
I agree with you, naked mole rats are awesome. And I am honest, they are really hard to sculpt. Because <laughs> of all the skin, you're doing sheets of clay where you're folding them over and then actually smoothing them in. If you want, maybe one day you can come over and have a clay session and I'll show you how to do skin and you can make your own naked mole rat. But they are really pretty awesome. They they are being studied quite a lot by science because they've discovered that they don't do cancer. And that is an incredible thing. So they want to know if there's a mammal that don't do cancer, can it tell us anything that will help us with our fight? So they're, they're really breaking the mould, so to speak. So we're elephant shaped now. We get an idea of the size. I think YouTube's still broken, I'm not sure. Is YouTube still broken? Oh, YouTube. <sighs> right. Next thing I want to do with that is I want to get some eyes in. I've decided, mainly because I had the choice out of red or blue, to go with blue eyes. Now, I make my own eyes by making a little ball of clay pushing a little dent into it, putting the colour in and then putting a little dot of black clay and then some liquid clay over the top. They look pretty cloudy at the moment. Here, I'll hold them up. But once you get the varnish on them, that all goes very see-through and they look like actual proper eyes. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a ball tool. You won't find one like that, my ball tool, the I used it so much the wood broke so I've covered it in clay and baked it. I'm going to decide where to put the eyes. Now remember herbivores are to the side, carnivores are to the front. You mate are a herbivore so we've got two side eyes like that. Make sure that they are roughly the same in line with each other. And then I'm going to get my eye and just push it in that gap. Now if you're going to use crystal beads for eyes, do put tin foil behind them. It makes a difference. So we now have eyes on him. I'm going to put some eyelids, some a dark brown. Make sure it's soft. You're going to do two very very small sausages that taper either end that sort of let's have a look that sort of size looking like that two of those they're your under eyes now so they've got to be pretty even weirdly enough the thickness is more important than the length because too long you can always pinch it off if it's thicker than the other one it looks like it's got a swollen eye top eyelid you want a little ball of clay then you push it between your fingers flat then you take one side put it against your thumb and you're going to push it so it's a semicircle yeah, with the edges pinched in. There, most people do, but I've got a thing for bald animals. I also like sphinx cats, the rexes, and so much tiny detail. skinny pigs is one that I, I really love. I haven't had a skinny pig yet. A skinny pig is a guinea pig with no hair. Right, I'm just giving my hands a quick wipe. This is where you're going to have to pick your thing up. Make sure you're looking at what you're doing. So the under eye, I start it in the middle. Then I get my ball tool. Push it up into the corner. Smooth it in to the bottom. So there's not that big join line. 
I think it's too long so I'm going to just pinch off the extra that I don't want or you can use a little needle tool or anything that you want just to take off the extra and you don't need to use a ball tool this is me just using a long flat one or you can can use your finger if you're careful like that then the top eyelid again that looks a bit thick so start in the middle bring it down to the edge now it looks pretty closed at the moment concentrate in smoothing in the top join and then we will open it back up with a needle tool so it doesn't look like it's got a closed eye there we go like that then anything pointy you go under the top eyelid and just lift it so that it's more open there we now have an eye do the same the other side do you, do you need it focused anymore there you go an eye we do the other side so start in the middle on the bottom I advise you do the bottom eyelid first always bring it up to the edge smooth it in I do have other ball tools in this set I've just this is my favorite a little bit too long so take a bit off like that just move in that bit that I created a bit of a crater top eyelid flatten it down push it on a rolling motion will get it off sticky fingers make sure it's down at the into the corners and the top eyelid is smoothed in like that and we're going to open the, the eyelid back up so you hook under and you just lift a bit you can do the bottom eyelid a bit as well see like that we now got eyelids so now we've got eyes on I think a mouth is the next thing what I suggest for that you get yourself either a pin or a pin tool have a look see what kind if any of the pictures show a mouth size not really because we're going to need to get involved with horns so just don't go so high up that it's going to affect the horns and just do a dig line across that's a smile now the next thing I suggest you can see there's a little bit of a furrow where the tool is kind of thick you can push that mouth just back together so it looks more like <clears throat> an actual mouth you can also put in smile lines if you wish so just do a little couple of lines up by the corner so to show the creases so we're now pretty much on a basic elephant shape I think I'm gonna put them to one side we're gonna start talking hair <clears throat> in two seconds we just need to do ears and that little lump for the top of the head we are going to put hair going over it so it can be done with your scrap clay now I don't know if you can see in that picture but it's got a dip in the middle of it so what you want is a kind of lumpy shape and then you get a tool push it so you've got that dip 
and that can be done with cocktail stick you do not need to spend a lot of money on tools just get the rough shape that you want right that's going to go on the top of the head in the center make sure that it all lines up right now is sip a drink so so far it's looks kind of scrappy but we're gonna get to the good bit soon ears first and then we're gonna be there they've got quite small ears because they lived in cold climates so <clears throat> brown clay again because this isn't going to get covered in hair as a side note <clears throat> if you don't want to make individual hairs and add them you can use a tool like this it's got little fine metal bristles or you can use a pin tool and you just score in lines and it looks pretty hair like I have to go over it quite a bit but you can see what I mean now <coughs> what you'll find <coughs> is you'll be able to do a patch and the only way to do the next patch would be to hold the bit you just done and smudge it what you do is you bake it and then you add a thin layer of raw clay and texture that and then bake that then add another bit of clay so it's a process of several bakes so that then you don't smudge the work because it's baked hard that's the trick to it right I'm gonna get some little balls because we don't want big ears and they're gonna get flattened out anyway so you want to make sure your ball of clay your start off ball is pretty little and you're not tearing brown over your light blue base this is a good thing, good time to show you this. 70% rubbing alcohol. You got some clay where you didn't want it and you can't brush it off. You use a tool to scrape off what you can, but you're going to get a smudge. See? There's a, let's hold this up. A smudge of brown that I don't want there. So just put it on get your rubbing alcohol you can either use a bit of kitchen roll I like a cotton bud to do this just take it over and you'll see it lifts off the top coat because it melts the clay slightly so as you can see the cotton blood bud is now blue and the brown is completely gone if it's baked clay it doesn't work you need to sand it if it's raw clay rubbing alcohol would do it you need 70 percent or higher anything lower than that won't really do anything um the isopropyl alcohol would do the same thing it's all pretty cheap stuff so it's worth having a bottle to tidy up it will also take off fingerprints because what it's doing is melting a very thin top layer of your clay so that you can just wipe it off right now the ears are basically sort of flat flaps so I want to get this ball very thin by pinching it into roughly the shape I want the ears so that kind of shape and see how thin it is yeah because where our ears have sort of dipped in bits elephant ears don't they're just sort of very flat bits of skin but they're not completely semicircle they have got a bit of a lobe to them 
So you just pinch in the sides and that will bring it down into a more of a lobey point. I'm going to get my elephant back and I'm going to make sure that the lobes go down and the ears, I'm just pushing them on to the side of the head. Now, you can join it, you can smooth it in with your tool or if you're going to be adding lots of hair like I'm going to be, then you haven't got to worry so much about that because the join is going to be covered with hair. There we go. You look more like an elephant already. Or a mammoth. There we go. So we now have ears on. We've got all the basic components ready done other than the towel. So we put a little fella to one side. We put our blue base to one side and we're going to prep up some hair. So what we're going to do is take a bit off. Right. Cut yourself a few slices of a log and then cut them lengthwise so you still got some fade in so you've got little logs of your blended colour. Does that make sense? Now, once you've got a few of one colour, put them to one side and get a few few different colour fades like that. I, You can just use one colour. I prefer to mix it up because to me it feels more like the actual the ones that they've taken out of frozen blocks of ice seem to be quite mottled coloured so I thought I would do a few different colours of hair so that's two cut up into logs like that that can go to one side done that one, done that one got this one And it seems like a lot of effort, but it actually is really worth it to me to make the hair look far more interesting by doing this. And it doesn't take that long to do a Skinner blend, so it's kind of worth it. Here we go. That's that done couple more colours to do let's put them together and slice like that that might be quicker so one two put those to one side like this now I didn't want to cut them as a big stack of blocks so I wanted to make sure that I had the fade going top to bottom and I weren't going to chop them in the wrong direction but you can production line the hair like this then what you're going to do is you're going to roll them into long strands of hair so I've got them all mixed in together like that And stick them from each other that always helps there we are right so how to make them into hair you're going to roll them so that they then form logs kind of long decide which color you want to be the bottom and which color you want to be the top I think I'm going to go dark to light on all of them so the the side you want to be the bottom roll it into a point you're going to do that on all your logs so you see why it's useful to be able to dual wield and roll together 
and to be honest it only took me about a week of practicing and I got this down by the time I'd finished making a set of unicorn charms that did it for me so once I got a few of these rolled out I'm going to then start attaching them to our mammoth whoops that one's too thin it didn't work there we go so yeah running out of things to talk about already right let's attach some of these and then i'll come back and roll out some more decide on a start place i think the back is always best so you're going to go up to the top of the spine that's your starting point and then just make a wavy sort of shape going down the body like that and then the next one goes next to it that's the same color so let's use a different color like that and you just start to add hair in a line going across the back can you see already how much better it looks to add it it's useful to have your base color at least similar to the color that you're putting on the hair so my scrap clay was brown which was perfect right just forming this all up had a great moment with my guinea pigs yesterday they hadn't discovered how to jump up onto ledges so they've got a really nice ledge in their cage that they were completely ignoring and they worked it out yesterday and now they won't get off it they absolutely love having a three-dimensional environment rather than just a little flat cage look what they don't know is they've got actually three floors to be running around on they just haven't worked it out yet and we're going to do some training on them so that they can learn that there is far more space than they actually imagine there is but they're doing really really well they're being very very good pigs so roll out a few hairs now you can if you've got a big big project roll out all the hair that you think all at once but what you'll find is you'll end up with a load over that you didn't need to have made now what I'm finding is because I'm getting down to a taller part I'm gonna need to double row the hair at that bit so you can just lift up the strands put Boy, another hedgehog. underneath Boy, hedgehog says, are you gonna put edges on the ramps we are putting edges on the ramps yes actually I was planning to buy plastic ramps with carpet instead of ridges mm -hmm. we the cage is an involving thing it always has been so just like that it's very easy to put in a second row of hair under what you just made if you find that it's not going as far down as you want it to it's not a problem so I'm just going to go in and keep adding hair like this all around this guy what time are we at we've done an hour do you want me to keep adding hair on screen so you can all watch me make this guy because I could probably coat it in hair in about half an hour Fairy Hedgehog says that mammoth hair is really cool it it does really work out well doesn't it and you haven't got to be so neat because they want they looked scruffy they were woolly so you want it in sort of wavy scruffy looking 
Right, I've almost covered one side of the body. So I think I can go up to the next line. What I'm going to do once I've gotten under the legs is I'm going to put it onto its base at that point. So, a few more rolled out. But it's amazing how much the hair is hiding all the scruffy lines and it's looking like you've done all the joining in properly. So, it took me a while to realise there are certain jobs you don't need to do that you're just doing work that is pointless and that was an epiphany moment I tell you because I went through a phase of smoothing every single joint I made I made sure that all the colours and textures were perfect on something that I was going to then stick onto something else and that whole side wasn't going to show it's all a learning process. I've been playing now for three years. And where most people, they will pick up clay probably. They're lucky if they do it once a week. I try and do it at least a few times a week, as much as my health allows me to, because it's my method of escape. So my three years is probably more hours than most people but it's when i got started you look at people who have been at it a long time and you think i'm never going to get there it's very daunting it's very sort of it feels it makes you feel most defeated before you start you don't need to feel that way all of us who are experienced started off inexperienced right I'm going to do the legs I think hmm you're a bit long let's take some of that brown off there because I think if I do the legs then it'll be easier for the, me to lay the back hair over the top and not have to worry so much about what size strands I'm doing so I'm just roughly putting them in scruffly along you're going to go around the whole of the leg up to the top there just make sure that the tops join on well that's the very important bit and that you're not overhanging the feet too much because they'll just end up flattened under the feet when you go and place it Here we are, I think I'm going to need to pinch that off. But you can use your extra scrappy bits in other places. They're good patches, so don't throw them away. When it's done, it all looks a lot better. Let's bring that in move that down there we go so the other way of um, doing a two color I'm going to do that on this is you literally put two together and just roll it in and then smudge along and it kind of joins in and looks quite two-toned but it doesn't have that really pretty fade that's the risk that's what you're getting for um, not taking the time. But on hair, it can still look very effective. Right. It's amazing how much hair you need. So, I think I'm going to do one side mount it on and then probably <clears throat> do the last side of the hair off camera unless you guys are finding it really interesting watching me place hair but 
<clears throat> it comes together pretty quickly. So I do this one last one. I'm going to place that on and then I'm going to put the crystals in. And what I'll do is I will share on Facebook over the next few days what the finished mammoth looks like because I don't really want to bore you all to tears. Mary Hedgehog says, I want to see the crystals. Right. Okay. So that shows you what it's going to end up like that you end up with a really good mix of hair across it and you can still shape it in pretty well. Right, I move these out of the way. We're going to mount it on. So pick your placement because you don't want to put it on several times because the brown will show up. Now, I've got a lot of extra blue clay so what I'm going to do is Jake said I can pick so let's put a stone there I'm just going to push it in like that and the clay will hold it if you find after baking it comes out you can always glue it with two part epoxy let's do a couple of white ones now when you're using beads you want to try and bed it so that you don't see the little holes that are through it so what I'm going to do is you push in decently enough and then we've got a bead in like that um, you can also tin foil back your glass beads so let's get some like this get a bit of foil shiny side out like that choose a glass bead that you want and you put it around the back and you can either just tuck in any sticking over bits or you can I would get a bit of tin foil with a hole right in the middle wouldn't I one second let's find a bit that hasn't got a hole in it there we go you can tuck in the, you can tuck in the edge bits or you can use a craft knife to cut it down to the right size but I find just literally just squidge it to the right size it's going to be hidden the clay the reason behind that is it reflects the light a lot better Harry Hedgehog says gay for crystals Hearty Hearty Life says he is so cute um, Perry Hedgehog says he really is and then I saw someone on TV who makes buy my Loch Ness monsters and they went to patch and Carly's models and then Hearty Hearty Life says I'm blown away by the combination of your face sculpting skills and your wildlife knowledge awesome I've always loved animals. Thank you all. I've always loved animals. My dad used to say to me, if you want to learn the right way of doing something, look to nature. And it always stuck with me. So, can you see, if I was to get the same see-through crystal and put it on without the tin foil, let's hold him up that's the difference it's the glass beads I'm trying to show so can you see with the tin foil behind it it has so much more light catching and it keeps the color that's the one with the tin foil that's the one without and it's even more important if you're on a dark background Oh, well thank you everyone I'm really touched by all the nice things you've got to say about me I do try I yeah I really do try 
I do love little tumble stones and crystals. I just tend to have drawfuls of the stuff because I think they come out with a look that you just can't get when you fake them in clay. And you can make some pretty decent fake crystals from clay and there's some really amazing tutorials out there but I think having the real thing just is so nice if it will go through an oven you can really have no problems with adding it to your clay let's do a couple of these next to it and then I reckon if I add too much more I'm going to end up overcrowding it which isn't something I want to do right. there we go I don't want them to look too in line with each other let's put a little blue one there behind it so it looks more like natural rather than man made there we go right what we got is on that side a little stack of a big and a couple of small in greens and whites then we've got down by the front two cat's eye crystals that have the reflective then over on the side i've done the little square crystals that do some interesting pinks and purples when you get them in the right light a glass bead and another little stone I'm going to leave the back because that's where I'm going to put my maker's mark um, it's always important to have a maker's mark you just um, do a bit of research see if it's taken and design something I do a little triangle with a C in each corner for Carly's Creative Clay. Everything I make has that on it, other than my charms, because they are just too small. But that's how I know if it's made by me. Some of my early pieces don't, before I actually got involved in this. But it's a thing that's done with art right he will probably take me another 40 minutes just to go around and cover up the bits that you can see with hair and i promise to post on my facebook and on instagram and twitter when i get him finished what the end result's going to be like but it's literally hair placement and possibly adding a few wrinkles up the nose with a line tool yeah and don't forget for the towel that's a good point let's just quickly show you a towel i like much thank you right they found that the towel tends to be darker hair so you can just do a couple of strands together and just clump them and make it a towel like that i tend to make a stick the right length for what you want then all these little off scraps you can go around and turn into little hair strands and just cover the towel in them like that so it's still um hair covered like that and then at the end you can make a tiny brush by just making tiny little logs taper the tip fold it in half like that and you do a couple of these and then pinch them together at the top 
and it looks perfectly like the hair at the end of a towel of elephants, giraffes, all that sort the same sort of thing. See what I mean? So just in a few seconds I was able to just do that and then you get that end and you push it onto the stick and then make sure that the hair comes down and covers that join. Then that just gets pushed on to the bum in the right place. Does that make sense? So most of a mammoth all done. I'm going to head off and I will show you all this pretty soon in the next day or two. I hope you all have a good week. Once I got it finished, I will be in touch with you all, arty hearty life, so that I can give you Jake's mammoth and I hope he loves it. Okay, have a good week everyone. Bye!